spent, I fuck with Locker Films. And I, I got probably the only siphon on Locker Films right now. I just thought about that. I fucked with Locker, Locker Films when he was on the come up. And I just, I'm a creative. And I told you I'm an MC, bro. I said, man, fuck it, I'm going to do a, a, a siphon on Locker Films. Now it's no, no more heroes. If you go back and you type in Nick Bags, Cypher, no more heroes. You're going to see that classic shit, bro. I, I was out here really rapping, bro. Like, for real. Pushing this shit. I got history, bro. I got... And this is the thing, bro. I got so much history in the game, bro, that niggas don't even really know. But that's what we got to talk about it, you know? Because, but, but I got the receipts for everything, you know? That's merch. I, and I ain't going to laugh. I ain't going to laugh for some shit, you know? So hey, everybody man. can fact check everything that I say. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that history, bro? Yeah, well, man, I was, uh, I got an opportunity. Now, I remember when I told you everything counts? Now, somebody uh, caught some, I was just posting stuff. I decided to start blogging and like, probably like, when, oh, when I met Zach TV, he made me start blogging. He, uh, I, I did like a few videos with him, you know, I dropped some videos on his channel. He got a lot of my rap videos on Zach TV channel and all that. And uh, when I was saying what bro was doing, I started thinking, shit, man, I could do this too. So I've I, I been had a YouTube channel. I started like posting little shit, posting little stuff on my Instagram, you know, little blogging type stuff, talking about, you know, artists and all this. And one time I said something about uh, 50 Cent. Uh, and they, uh, TMZ end up, somebody from TMZ end up DMing me about this. Like, hey, do you want to talk about 50 Cent and his new deal with F and Vodka? I'm thinking this shit a game, bro. I'm thinking it's a joke, but I still was flagged. Yeah, let's do it. They sent me a, a, a Skype link, man. I, I was on TMZ, bro, for all 2015, all a lot of 2016, bro. So it's like, bro, everything count, bro, and everything add up. Because when I look back at my catalog, I'm raw as hell, bro. I'm a real photographer, bro. I got Keith, Keith, Case of Kior reposting my content, bro. Uh, I got, uh, I work with boxers in Atlanta. Shout out Brandon Gladden, man. Real hands, bro. I'm telling you, you gonna hear that name, Brandon Gladden, man. He a cruiserweight. He uh, uh, 15 and 0, about 12 knockouts. He really liked that, bro, in Atlanta. But anyway, I, I linked with bro and uh, did, did a photo shoot, did interviews with Brandon Gladden, and I got Roy Jones Jr. liking the pictures, Mikey Garcia liking the pictures, bro. I've been networking, man. Shout out Keisha Kiora, too, because she, you could go to her page right now and see Check That Bag Media. That's my media company and my photography company, bro. You're going to see that and see that work, bro. You know, because she she popped out with uh, Gucci, man, at the Pooh Shiesty event. So I took a picture of them. I was on stage. People got pictures of me on stage with them. And I got the content. on. Y'all go watch the content on my YouTube channel. Uh, YouTube slash check that bag uh, dot com. I mean, YouTube dot com slash check that bag. <laughs> and uh, you will see the Pooh Shiesty uh, footage, man. You know, some of the last Pooh Shiesty footage that people got going viral on my page right now. So don't miss it, y'all. Hey, let me ask you this. Um, how does a person go from working in the shoe store to owning the construction company? What's oh, the that's hard, bro. Man, you so smart, bro. I love the questions that you be asking, bro. I could tell you a smart guy. But look, let me tell you what it what it really was. When I came out of jail 2012, I knew that I wanted to do something serious with my life because I couldn't go back to jail, you know? So I... I I took a break off selling weed. I've been selling weed my whole life since I was 15 when I got out of jail. I didn't. I was in jail for my 21st birthday. So I got out of jail and uh, I started finding stuff to do. I took a construction program just so I could get some certification. That was one of the first things. I was just on growth and development, trying to build my character and build my portfolio of work that I know how to do. So I learned how to uh, work with heavy machines, uh, you know, skid steers, little bobcats and stuff. So. I learned that first. So I couldn't find a job in Chicago for that. I found the job. I worked on 55th Estate at that demo yard, man. I met somebody there at the demo yard that said, hey, I got a job uh, 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 they, on like commercial, on like the five, Southeast end. So I went to that job. 
I couldn't even make no real money at that job. So after that, I'm like, now, uh, what can I do? Let me work my network. So end up, my grandfather end up, uh, now he, he do a lot of work with the Chicago Urban League. He a big chauffeur and he used to chauffeur all of the big artists when they come to Chicago. And he was working with the Urban League. So well, when he went to the Urban League, I ended up getting a job with a shoe company called Villa Shoes. Now, this was when they first started. So I started working with them and this company ended up being big in Chicago and they ended up recently making a merger with DTLR and now they the same company is DTLR. So this was, so uh, I'm saying all that to say during, when I was doing the shoe game, that's where I started meeting a lot of the artists too, bro. That's why I met Lil Dirk, King Yella came in there. Uh, Rondo number no. nine came in there. Uh, man, all type of people was up in there. T.I. I was meeting a lot of artists uh, just off working at the shoe store. I was working at 87 Estate. So this was me building my, uh, how to talk to people, bro. I was building a lot of skills working at the shoe store and it was the biggest selling shoe store uh, in, the, in, the, in the city. We were selling like 40,000 a day. Uh, on Saturdays and shit going crazy, selling like 60,000. You know, doing crazy numbers, bro. And I was the top salesman. So I learned that I had a hustle in me that was unmatched. I got a way to deal with the people that's unparalleled, bro. Because the people just look at me and, and, man, I guess they see something real in me, bro. Because that's all I project. You know, so I, I picked up so many skills at this shoe store, bro. And met so many people that when I ended up uh, getting the... Uh, the opportunity when I moved to Atlanta, I, I got the, I moved to Atlanta mo mainly because I got accepted to Morehouse. But uh, when I, when it was time for me to go, I couldn't afford it. I couldn't get no scholarships and shit, bro. So I'm like, man, fuck it. I got to do something else. I was trying to see what I wanted to do. And lo and behold, my little brother, man, shout out B-Boy, free B-Boy, man. One of them real members you already know, man. Yeah. He was doing construction. He was living with his dad. Uh, doing construction in Detroit. So I'm like, man, I just thought, like just me being the smart individual that I am, damn, if he could do it, I could do it, you know? <laughs> so I follow my little brother, man. I was, I, I mirrored my brother and I did everything he did. If he do this, I would do this. You know, if he look this way, I'm gonna look this way. You know, with everything that he did, I did. And I mastered my craft and learned how to uh, do construction, you know? And then I told him, I'm like, look, bro, I'm finna go to the A and I'm finna make a business with this, bro. And I ain't finna play no games with this thing, man. I'm finna take off. And I came to the A and uh, I wanted to make a business, but I didn't have the skills. So I just started working with people, bro. So I'm working with people, working with people, working with people, I'm working with white boys, I'm working with Mexicans, I'm working with people that uh, from, Britain and talking all type of funny ways, you know. I'm working with everybody and I'm picking my skills up. I'm getting cold. I, damn, I know how to I know how to paint the house. Damn, I know how to change doors. Damn, I know how to lay floors. Damn, I know how to build a whole fucking house from the ground up. I'm raw as hell. And this just happened over time and time and time. Then I looked up and I got so tired of working for other people. I'm thinking, damn, Nick, you got all the skills. Why don't you, uh, you know, use the skills to pay the bills and start your own business? I started my own business. And bro, I ain't looked back since. It's been lit as fuck. And now I'm uh, working on getting my uh, uh, contractor's license. Because I got a real business, I got uh, you know, business license and everything like that. But I'm uh, mostly doing home renovations. So now I'm finna get my license so I can actually buy homes and flip them and sell them, do all the work myself and everything. So you know, it's big moves being made. I got a business truck, big ass band, hella tools. You know, we getting to it, bro. I got members on my team that at the call of a hat, man, you know? And now I'm just, man, I'm, I'm, I'm building a generational wealth for my family. Got a little girl, I, my a little baby, she one years old. You know, I got a fiance, man. You know, I'm just living right, bro.